we have to hit this button. Okay, hello. I should be live right now. Is there anyone who can tell me in the chat if I'm successfully live? This is only my second time doing this. Let me know if you are able to hear me too. That would be greatly appreciated. Well, I'm not seeing anybody on right now. So I will wait. Oh, I see Bird Drive is telling me that I'm alive. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Bird Drive. Appreciate that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first topic that I wanted to cover was the grad student position that I have advertised on my YouTube channel. I've taken that down for the time being because there is a issue where I can only hire someone who is already authorized to work in the United States for that position. And I want to make sure that I don't have any of you spend your uh, valuable time reaching out to me and applying for that position if I'm unable to offer it to you. The reason that I need someone who, who is already able to work in the United States is I need the person to be able to start this graduate position next month. Because of that, I it has to be someone that does not require sponsorship or a visa. Students that are, are counted as international students are required to be in person during their first semester of their studies. And there's simply not enough time between now and when I would need you to be available for me to recruit an international student to be here. The international student would have to start August 15th and they'd have to be ready to start teaching uh, a week thereafter. And I just, I'm not comfortable that there would be enough time with uh, visits to the consulate and making travel arrangements and procuring housing and uh, taking care of all the paperwork on my end that would be uh, required by law um, for uh, uh, an international student and that paperwork uh, to meet that August 15th deadline of this year. It's not a position that a student would be able to start in January because if I do not utilize these funds for a graduate student beginning uh, this fall, then those funds will go to someone else. So that's why that link has been taken down. Uh, so um, I, again, I, I thank those of you that, uh, that applied, but I, I, again, I took down that video because I don't, I don't want to um, have any of you uh, expend your efforts. Next on my list, I wanted to talk, uh, to touch on something that I've talked about in my last live video two weeks ago. And this is based upon one of my uh, more popular videos, uh, the video about uh, how to decide which settings to use when running Maxent and how to make a BIOS file. I mentioned this in the live video but last time, but I thought I would actually go through it and show you what I mean. That there are two different versions of, let's see here, let me get this pulled up. There are two different versions 
of the tutorial files for that tutorial. So again, this is if you are trying to run the ENM evaluate function, where this is for that tutorial for choosing the right settings for running Maxent. I get a lot of emails and feedback about errors, and I believe that most of those errors are, be, are from running the wrong version of the script. So if you look, when you go to download the files needed for that tutorial, so well, I can't pull it up right now, but when you do that, you have two options. One is if you have previously installed the ENM eval package and you're using an older version of the package, then you would want to use it here. But if you have never installed the ENM eval package before, or if you've just recently installed it, you're going to want to download the tutorial files here. Most of you, probably 95% of you, are going to want to download the new tutorial files here. Most likely, most of you have the most recent version of the ENM eval package set up on your RStudio, in which case you need to use this newer version of the tutorial files. Bottom line, if you're looking to use the tutorial files to run ENM Evaluate or to use your own data, you're going to most likely want to download the files right here. Let me show you what happens if you accidentally download these older files right here. Most of you, unless it's a very specific use case, are not going to want to download these files. You're going to want to download the ones down here. If you download the wrong ones, show you. So here's the wrong ones. So I'm going to go ahead and open that in our studio. take a second to run. Bear with me, folks. There we are. So I'm going to go through the steps of that tutorial. So I'm going to set my working directory. Hang on, folks. Okay, and I'm going to load these packages. I'll take a minute to load. Okay. And we're going to see some errors here, so let me show you. everything down to the bottom here.
Hmm. Wait, okay, I think I didn't run. I think I didn't run everything. I guess this one was the right one. Let me try to reload up the wrong one then. Okay, let me do this again. So now it's running. Before it didn't run. Well, I'm not seeing any viewers for the live stream. There we are. It said we got an error. See if I can find it for you here. There we are. Well, I've got too many windows open, so my uh, Ubuntu Linux is running very slowly. But the bottom line is that. When we ran it with the older script, it didn't run. And we had an error about some unused syntax. But when we ran it with the newer script, it did run. 
So make sure that you download the newer script. So when you come to this screen here, wait, don't download this one. This is going to be, most of you are not going to want to download this one. I should probably take this out. Most of you are going to want to download this one here. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Another thing I wanted to talk about is in the last live stream, there was a person that participated who was having trouble running Samova. And the problem that this person was having, uh, they, they, they couldn't troubleshoot what was going on. And the issue was that they had two different data points that had the same GPS coordinates. So just to give you some background, SAMOVA stands for Spatial Analysis of Molecular Variance. And this refers to when you have both genetic data for your individuals and you have geographic data, the latitudes and longitudes of where your individuals are located. And you want to understand if there are some natural groupings of your individuals into populations that takes into account both their genetics and their geography. So the issue that uh, Dan was having was that he was, he was getting some sort of an error. And uh, I troubleshooted that error with him and I made a video about it. So later I will link that video in the show notes of this live stream. What we ended up figuring out was that it was because two of his GPS coordinates had exactly the same uh, latitude and longitude. And what we learned from that was that SAMOVA will not allow two of your data points to have the same GPS coordinates. In this case, it wasn't an error though, because Dan had two samples that were genetically unique, but that were collected from the same location and therefore have the same GPS coordinates. So what did he do? He doesn't want to throw out one of those individuals because then he would lose that genetic data. So what he did was he slightly modified the GPS coordinates of one of those two individuals so that those GPS coordinates were not exactly the same. Then he was able to successfully get Samova to run. And I show you that in that, uh, in that video that I made. So if you have trouble with Samova, you're going to want to check out that video. The next uh, issue that I had someone write to me about was running Arlequin on a Windows machine. One thing I want to mention again that I've mentioned in the last live stream is that virtually anything that you see me run in my Ubuntu Linux virtual machine, you can actually also run on Windows. So you can go and if it's Arlequin, you can download Arlequin and you can run it on Windows. If it's Structure, you can download Structure and run it on Windows. Whether those programs will still be supported in future Windows updates is yet to be seen, but for now, they do run under Windows, at least under Windows that have a x86 architecture. Hope I'm saying that right. As opposed to uh, uh, an AMD-based uh, chip architecture. Now, the same is actually true for Macs. Virtually all of the programs that you see me run in my Ubuntu virtual machine, you can run on a Mac, except for Arlequin and Structure. Those are two where you either will need access to a Windows machine or you will need to set up um, a Linux machine. You can't run VirtualBox on, on Macs anymore. But a Mac is not an option if you want to run Arlequin or Structure. So you'll want to be using Linux uh, or a Windows machine for running those programs. So uh, don't feel constrained to use Ubuntu Linux to follow my tutorials if you're not comfortable in the Linux environment. Of course, if you're on a Windows machine, you can download my Ubuntu Linux virtual machine, which has everything all set up, and you find it, may find it more convenient to work within uh, Linux. But that said, let me show you 
what it's like to run Arlequin on a Windows machine. Okay, so I already have it downloaded here from my tutorial. And what I want to show you, we could, we could run Arlequin if, if you all wanted me to, but what I want to show you is how to convert from a FASTA file to an Arlequin file. So that's a different tutorial that I have. And that was where this person who contacted me was having difficulty. They were, first of all, they were running the uh, file conversion on a Windows machine, not on uh, my Ubuntu Linux machine, and that's fine. But they were additionally, before they were running Arlequin, they were using my tutorial to convert from their genetic data from FASTA format into uh, Arlequin format. For those of you that are not familiar, <coughs> well, first of all, backing up, there's two branches to my channel. One branch is evolutionary genetics, population genetics tutorials, and um, the other branch is uh, geographic information system, landscape ecology based tutorials. So some of you know me based upon evolutionary genetics, uh, some of you know me based upon landscape ecology and species distribution modeling. So what I'm talking about right now is the evolutionary genetics, population genetics set of my tutorials, and Arlequin is used for performing analysis of molecular variants. And this allows you to understand how genetically different your populations of your species are. You have to on your own install RStudio. You're also going to need to install LibreOffice. And I'll have more to say about that here shortly. And you'll need on your own to install uh, Arlequin. But let's just, let's go through and show, so this, it's the same, and notice that this looks the same for those of you that have used my Linux-based tutorial on converting file formats, this looks the same. That's because our studio will work across platforms. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Session, set working directory, to source file location, we'll load the ape library, oops, my bad. By the way, if any of you have questions, I have the chat window open. So please feel free to put questions in the chat. If you have some qu problem that you're having with your data, put it in the chat and we can talk about it. And I can try to troubleshoot it with you during this live session. Although what is more likely to happen is, is I'll start tinkering with it and then I'll have to work on it on my own. But um, hopefully I can come up with a solution that I can post in a video for you and for others to look at later. So this was the problem that another person on my channel was having. So uh, okay, so we've loaded the ape library. Then what you do is this is where you would put the name of your FASTA file that you're looking to convert to Arlequin format. You put it here on line 10 and you also put it here on line 11. You have to do it in both places. Then what you would do, and this is covered in the tutorial for running Arlequin, is you first run lines 10 through 19. Then it generates this file called Contam Com Companion Data Initial. Let me show you that. Oops, got the wrong thing pulled up, bear with me. Got so many windows open. What we need to do is go here to the finder. And there's that file companion data initial. What I want you to notice, and this is going to be for most of you that have Microsoft Office, by default, that file is going to be opened by Microsoft Excel. And this is really important. This was the uh, cause. Well, I, I didn't hear back from this person, but I strongly suspect that this was the cause of the problem, was that she was double clicking at this stage and it was opening up this spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel. My tutorial is designed for opening up this spreadsheet in LibreOffice. 
that may sound like a minor point, but uh, the, the steps in the tutorial don't work unless you're opening up this file in LibreOffice. So that's why I was saying that you need to have LibreOffice installed. All these softwares that I tell you about are all free. So you don't have to pay a dime uh, or your, 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 your currency in your, in your local area to download this software. You can um, download it for free if you go to the right websites. And I can provide links to where you can download this stuff if you need them. Just let me know in the chat. But that's why you have to have LibreOffice installed. You could do it using Microsoft Excel, but the steps would be different. So what you need to do is have LibreOffice installed, right click here, and you would go to Open With, and then you would select LibreOffice. And then you would follow the steps in my, uh, uh, in my Arlequin tutorial on my YouTube channel or my website. So you can, you can do everything on your Windows machine as long as you're using exactly the same software. And that includes, although it seems like an insignificant point, using LibreOffice instead of Microsoft Excel. This is important because when you are making your alterations to this file and saving it out again, because the way that this script works, it's a little weird, is that first you have to generate this companion data file, and then you have to rename it, and then you, uh, then you uh, run some other lines of the script after that, and then that'll give you your Arlequin file. And you can do all of that exactly following my tutorial on YouTube, but you have to have exactly the same software installed or that tutorial won't work. Does anybody have any questions about that? I know Arlequin's a popular one. I get a lot of questions about it. So um, some of you that are on the live stream, looks like we've got three of you. Um, if you have any questions about Arlequin, I could, I could, I could discuss those further. So what else can I do for you folks? I had another question that a, that a user gave me, and I can, I can talk about that. Let me pull it up. This was a question that was just posed to me on my on one of my YouTube videos. It was someone they wanted to install this specialized program that has to run with Grass GIS. So those of you that are on the on the live stream, um, let me know in the chat window what. What sorts of analyses are you using? Are you using the GIS analyses and the species distribution modeling, or are you using the evolutionary genetics analyses, the, the Arlequin, the structure, uh, the uh, phylogenetic analyses? Oh, so yeah, let me know in the chat window. I'd love to hear from you. So I did have someone who wanted to know how to install the R Ava flow as an extension in Grass GIS. So you're never supposed to live demo, but I like to throw caution to the wind. Um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and try to live demo that. Uh, what do you think, folks? Does that sound interesting to you? Well, if there are no objections. I'll go ahead and give that a try. So let's see, let me look at which virtual machine I'm running. I may have to switch virtual machines here. Okay, good. This is the, I'm running the one right now for landscape ecology, so I can just keep it going. So let's see what happens. This will be fun. Um, if, if we run into errors, you'll, you'll see my troubleshooting steps when I'm using Linux. I believe that this R Ava flow addition to Grass GIS has to be run on Linux, interestingly. So this is a case where uh, it would be very beneficial to, to use my, my pre-configured virtual machine because I already have Grass GIS installed. And all you would have to do is install this, this R Ava flow. So what is 
what is this R Ava flow thing and what is Grass GIS? For those of you that may not know, ah, first I'm trying to close this out. My Ubuntu virtual machine always runs really slow when I'm doing the live screen because I've got so many window opens and I don't I don't throw a lot of system resources at it. Well, while my machine is getting caught up, I'll just tell you about it. Grass GIS is a geographic information system program that you use for running geospatial analyses or for looking at your stuff on a map. So the easiest way to understand what a, what a GIS is, a geographic information system, is Google Maps. Google Maps is a geographic information system. So let's just go through and have a look. I'll pull up Google Maps and just to show you how that's a geographic information system. Bear with me, folks. Okay, let me pull up the screen. Let me share the screen with you. pulling up Google Maps just to make the point that this is a geographic information system. So let's just, just looking around where I am, Tyler, Texas. So this is the University of Texas at Tyler and you see a map, you see roads, and you see some other features, but mostly you see roads. So roads is a layer. You need a program that knows what roads are and knows how to draw them on your screen. In order to do that, your program needs to understand where those roads are in space. Your program needs to be able to zoom out and to zoom in to show you those roads at different scales. And then you see this button down here that says layers. That's geographic information systems have something called layers. So on top of this map, we can add terrain. So now we can see where the hills are in Tyler. Tyler's not very hilly. We can see where there's traffic. There's no traffic right now in Tyler. We can see where the public transit is. There's not a lot of public transit in Tyler, uh, but it should be showing on the map somewhere. You can look at the biking routes. There's biking trails. So geographic information system is maps that you can stack on top of each other to see the things that you're interested in. So we can still see the roads. But we can also see the biking trails. And we can also see the parks. And we can also see these other businesses of interest. So. A geographic information system is maps that you can stack on top of each other. It's a program that understands spatial data and can draw things where they need to be. If I needed to measure the distance between here and here, a geographic information system can draw that distance, can measure that distance because it knows about geospatial data and it knows how far those things away, those points are away from each other, can measure those different distances in miles or kilometers or so on. Okay, let me get back to so 
still trying to exit out. It looks like this is frozen. I'm going to need to kill it here. This is why you're not supposed to do live demos. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll reboot that for you. Um, okay, so let's look at this. Let's look at this at this program R Ava Flow that we're going to try installing. So this is this program R Ava Flow is an add-on to Grass GIS. So Grass GIS is a geographic information system that can handle this spatial data, and it's free, completely free. You may be more familiar with a program called ArcGIS, which you have to spend money on and which is very antiquated and difficult to use. Um, well, GrassGIS is antiquated too, but it doesn't, it doesn't require as much effort to install it, uh, and you don't pay any money for it, which is a good thing. And you can learn a lot about GIS from using GrassGIS. And GrassGIS is really, really powerful. You can do everything with GrassGIS that you can do with ArcGIS pretty much. And you can also add on other plugins to Grass GIS that allow you to expand the capabilities of the software. Grass GIS is free because it's been developed by different people over many years. And since the 1990s, Grass GIS has been developed by volunteers all over the world. And so likewise, these add-on programs are developed by volunteers. And they're designed to be able to plug into something like GrassGIS to expand the capabilities of GrassGIS. So let me show you what this R Ava flow can do. Hang on, folks. Pull it up for you here. You all are a quiet group today. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. I hope you all aren't trying to chat and it's just not showing up. I'll refresh my chat window and make sure. Let's see, why isn't it showing up? See if you all can see it. Hmm. Hmm. That's weird. Let me try it again. Aha, there we go. So let's talk about it. Let's see, how can I? Let's see, I'm trying to think of the, see if I can size my window so that it'll show up on your screen better here. Properties. Trying to see if I can change the size of the screen because it's only showing part of it to you. Well, we'll just have to go with it. So this is the Mass Flow Simulation Tool. So this is for you to simulate the flow of materials 
I guess like for instance to simulate an avalanche or a mudslide using grass GIS and using um, you know layers of a digital elevation model showing the you know how high the mountains are in an area so let's take a look here so the software our a Ava flow is open source downloaded for free so let's see here and so it has this button here that says download Well, let's go ahead and download it within Ubuntu Linux. So let me load up that virtual machine. I'm going to test my chat, make sure it's working. Testing. Testing. Oh, it looks like it's working. Okay. Let me see if I've got my Ubuntu machine loaded up here. So it's still loading my Ubuntu virtual machine where I'm going to give this a try. Let's, let's, let, let's look at the download instructions in the meantime. I'm going to go ahead and pull those up. Okay, so there's a readme file. Oh, I see. I have to get, look at a manual. So let's try to find that manual. Oh, let's just do it this way. User manual. That's what we need. See, here it is. R AvaFlow runs on Linux operating systems. It relies on GRASS 7 and R. So that means you, you, this is a, one of those rare exceptions where you can't run uh, this program using a Mac. You can't using Windows. You, you can only use a, a, a Linux machine. But you can use VirtualBox to run a Linux machine on your Windows computer if you, if, if you want to. And you already need to have GRASS 7 installed and R which we both already have installed on my Ubuntu Linux virtual machine. Let me go ahead and load that up for you. So let's see what those instructions are. Our AvaFlow 2.4 can easily be installed through the command g.extension. So let's see how to do that. I think we have to watch a video to do it. Oh, here we are. Assuming that the folder with the R AvaFlow source code is stored in the directory home user one, installation just requires execution of the following command. Hmm. Well, we'll go ahead and try it. So I think, yeah, I think I've got my virtual machine open for you. Let me go ahead and make that visible on the screen for you. Okay. Let me, let's go ahead and try to download that program.
Oh, scissor tailed flycatcher. Thank you, Bird Drive. Yes, this is a t shirt that I uh, actually I designed this t shirt for Darwin Day in uh, 2016. We had Dr. David Hillis, a, uh, ev a prominent evolutionary geneticist, that gave the uh, keynote lecture for us. We used to do we used to do t-shirts every year. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Bird Drive, just to get you caught up. Um, we got a quiet group here today, which is fine. Um, but uh, what I'm doing is I've just been kind of going through the issues that people who've reached out to me over the last couple of weeks have been running into, and I've been talking about how to solve those problems. Right now, I'm tackling something a little challenging. Uh, this is for my landscape ecology GIS stuff. I had someone contact me who's trying to install this add-on to Grass GIS called r.avaflow. And I've never done this before. I'm trying to do it live. So we're going to see if it works. And this is something that can only be installed on Linux. So this is like perfect for the fact that I do all my tutorials in Linux because this is the only way you can do it. So here we are. So I just Googled r.avaflow. And again, this is for simulating like avalanches and landslides based upon geographic data where you've got elevation, where you've got mountains and things. So let's see. So the first thing we're going to do is download the tool, which is this button right here. I'll be sure to prominently let people know in the in the show notes or in some other way that we, we took a crack at uh, this R Ava flow. Let's see, so why isn't it downloading for me? Software. Okay, here it is. R Ava flow 2.4 software. These are the scripts are available for download below. So there's the one that this uh, gentleman or woman, I don't remember exactly, wanted to install. So we'll click there to download it. And there we've got the full circle ring around. We know that it's in, that it's downloaded. We can just click on it right here. And this is going to open it up within the compressed zip archive. Now, of course, we have to move that folder out of the compressed zip archive for us to be able to use it. And I want to put it in, exact, in the exact place where the manual is recommending. So let's see where they were recommending again. So it's got to go to... Oh, I see. We can, we could actually just put it anywhere. We just have to put in the URL. Well, in that case, I'm going to be lazy, and I'm just going to drag this folder to the desktop. So I'm going to open up a Finder window here, or a, I guess I'll call it a File Explorer window. What is the, what is the Linux, the Ubuntu Linux term for File Explorer? I always call it File Explorer. Okay, we're not going to be doing software updater right now, that's for sure. Okay, so now I'm going to drag this file, this folder, out of the compressed zip archive, copy it onto our desktop in an uncompressed normal format so that now it's ready to use. And now we can close our archive manager. Boy, this is an adventure. I don't know how this installation will go. So next, now they're telling you how to do it with this command within GrassGIS, but I think I think we can actually do it with the GUI in GrassGIS using something called G extension. So let's give that a try. So I'm going to go ahead and open up GrassGIS. I'm going to go to my terminal. I'm going to type in grass. Here we are. 
I need to set up a directory. We'll just use that default. And I need to make a grass location. So I'll just call it, we'll just leave it as a default. We'll call it new location. Um, and for the for the spatial rep reference system, we'll pick an e e EPSG code. This is just all stuff we have to do to set up the, I call it the projection space of GIS. We have to create our canvas. We have to specify um, what sort of a projection we're using. And I've got a lot of um, videos about GIS and uh, what projections are and things like that that you can look up on my YouTube channel. But the one I'm gonna use is gonna be 4326. Let's do a search and try There it is. I'm just going to set it to WGS 1984. This is the pseudo projection. I, long story, but this is the pseudo projection that um, your GPS, if you look up GPS coordinates on a, on a device, um, and it, or if you're using a topographic map, the, the coordinates will be in WGS 1984. So we'll just set it to that. Click OK. Click Finish. Now we're going to start our grass session. Now again, I, grass GIS is designed that you can do everything from a command line, but they also have a grass, graphical user interface. And I design all, all my tutorials based upon the graphical user interface. So I'd rather not drop into the console here to install the extension, our AvaFlow. I'd rather do it using the graphical user interface if I can. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can figure that out. So I'm looking for g.extension. I think I can do a search, oops, no, ah, hit the wrong button. I think I can do a search for that. Eh, I don't remember. Well, anyway, this gives you a this gives you a glimpse behind the curtain of what it's like when I'm making those tutorials. I do a lot of fumbling around like this to find what I need. So let's see here. It's going to be G something. So here we've got G map sets, G version, add on extensions. Here we are. Install extension from add-ons. So I think that's what we want. So I got to that from, oh boy, I hope I can remember. Settings, add-ons extensions, install extension from add-ons. List of extensions, double click to install. So it looks like I may need to install it in my home directory. Not sure. Other? Hmm. Maybe we can fetch and install the extension from Grass Add-ons? Let's see. Let's do a search. No, that's not going to work. So it's limiting me to some extensions that are in here. Fetch and install extension from Grass Add-ons. Well, we don't want to do that. We already downloaded it. So let's see. I'm going to close that out. Come on. Bear with me, folks.
Hmm. I guess we're going to have to use the command line. If it wasn't frozen, we would use the command line. I think I may need to free up some system resources here. I think we're done using Windows. I'm going to go ahead and close my Windows machine here. I've got a Windows virtual machine running. And then I may need to I may need to reboot my virtual my Ubuntu Linux virtual machine. Try it again. All right, bear with me, folks. Let's see, who do we have on? I'm going to try again. Oh, not not now, Claire. I'm on I'm I'm on uh, I'm on my video right now, sweetheart. My daughter's checking in with me here. Thank you all for your patience. I guess we'll try this using the command line. Okay, the, uh, those of you that are just joining us, I'm just reloading my virtual machine and I'm going to try again to install r.avaflow. Well, maybe it's not in the cards for us today. I clearly I need to give more more RAM to my virtual machine. Yeah, my virtual machine is having a hard time today. What other questions can I help you all with? If you have anything, put it in the chat for me. While I try to get this to, this thing going. I'll just uh, put it back up on the screen so you can see. I'm loading it up here. Next time I do a, a live session, I will uh, give more virtual resources to the virtual machine. Yeah, my computer really struggles when I'm live streaming. But we should be able to at least add it with the command line. Curious if there's a way to do it with the graphical user interface, but so far I haven't I haven't found that yet. Here we go. OK. 
Okay. Here we go, we're in. And we'll open up grass as soon as it's done booting up here. session. Oh yeah, if you ever get this error here about, oh, that's locked because you had to close your machine or something, and it says, do you want to continue? Click yes. And it'll be like, are you really sure? Just click yes. Because it's it, it thinks you're still running Grass GIS even though you had to shut down the machine and so it didn't shut down properly. So you just have to click yes to undo that lock and get rid of that lock and start over. Okay, so let's try again. Add-ons extensions. And we don't want to install an extension from add-ons. Let's just see if we can just do this in the console. So let me pull up that website again. Maybe I shouldn't because, well, we'll just do it for now because we're on the live stream. It's probably using system resources to have this web browser open. So we need to run, we need to tell it the location. So we need to do g extension, extensions equal. Well, we'll just copy the whole thing and then we'll modify it. So we'll go in here. So I'm, I've clicked on this tab that says console and I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. But I need to change this directory to point to the directory where we've got our Ava flow. So now we're going to go to the desktop and we're going to Actually, do it like this. Oh, no, we can't do it like this. New window. There we are. CD desktop. And let's look here. So there's our Ava flow. So this is the, what we need to put in. We need to put in desktop and then our Ava flow. So let's see if that'll work. Home. I guess what we should do is we should do it like this. We should actually go to File Explorer. Then we should go to the desktop. And then we should right click on it and go to properties home sample desktop because the username I use for this virtual machine is sample just because I was not creative when I came up with it just trying to get rid of that my mouse is a little sticky in my virtual machine So sample. And then desktop. And then I believe we just put put our Ava flow. get the syntax right for that? Oh, I can't see. It's not showing me. Hold on. I'm going to pull this up on a different screen and look. 
Bear with me, folks. I'm just making sure I get the syntax right. And then we're going to try to do the install. Yeah, and then we'll just add a forward slash. Okay. And that should do it. So let's see if it works. Error, please install grass development package. So let's see if we can inf install the grass development package. I'm betting that's one that I can install. I'm just trying to close some windows here to free up some system resources. I'm betting that's one that I can install here from add-on extensions. Install extension from add-ons. I bet that I could, but there's a grass development package I can install here. Let's look development. If I do a search, what happens? Hmm. General. Let's look up how to install a grass develop the grass development package. Install grass development package. Let's see, somebody had the same error. So it looks like that's something that we need to install from. That looks like something that we need to install here from the terminal. So it looks like we might need to do something like sudo super user do. That's the way that you make commands to install things. You have to be a, a super user sudo I was just trying this as a shot in the dark actually I should really look up how to install grass on Linux because that'll show us how to look up how to install the grass dev package so let's look that up let me uh, put this up on the screen for you to follow along with what I'm looking at hold on a second folks Pull that up for you. Okay, now we've got to go to well, and then look, it pulls up my video. Isn't that funny? So there's the installation guide. Let's look up for how we install on Linux. sudo apt get install grass grass doc. So I think what we would, we're going to want to do is Instead of grass.doc, I think it's going to be grass.dev. Dev. Uh, wait. Let's see, I'll just cancel out of that. No, I don't want to install grass.doc. I want to install grass.dev. We'll open up a new terminal. Let me... Um, 
stage that here. It's going to be grass-dev. So let's give it a try. OK, so we're going to try sudo apt get install grass grass-dev and see if that works. I'm going to put in the password, which for my virtual machine is stanleysfamous.com. 75702 is the password. How long this is going to take, but I, I don't think installing grass related stuff takes that long on Linux. Could be wrong. <clears throat> so hopefully, this will be done soon. Looks like it's getting there. And by the way, it, it noticed that it worked. I, I put in that command grass-dev, and it's installing stuff. So I think we're installing that grass development package that we needed. And then we can try running our, our, our uh, code again from the grass console. Yeah, so let's see. I may need to reload grass, but let's just see if I can... Mouse just gets gets sticky. There's a quirk of uh, running in the virtual machine. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to try it again. All right, fingers crossed, everybody. Let's see if it works. Look at that. We may be in business here, folks. See, it says compiling. That's a good sign. That means it's taking the program from here, from our desktop in this R AvaFlow folder, and it's turning it into a program that Grass GIS can use that's integrated into Grass. So that's a good sign. I don't know how long it's going to take to compile. Hopefully not too long. But I think we've got it. Now, the person who wrote to me said that they were getting an error at some point during the installation. Updating private add-ons metadata file. Installation of our AvaFlow successfully finished. So that took a little time, but I, I think we got it. Let's see if there's if there's something we can try to see if it's working. So I'm gonna put back up the user manual on the screen for you and let's just see if we can try something. Let me see if I've got the right thing on the screen for you there. Looks like I do. Okay. So next, let's see if they give us an example. I know there's a video that you can watch that shows how to use it, but I'm wondering if they've just got some simple example that we can use. It doesn't look like they do. Um, I know I've I checked this out before and there's tutorial videos. I don't know how this is going to work in a, in a, in a um, YouTube live, but let's just see. Let's give it a try. Let's see if um, see if it works. 
Right, so you see this, you see the video, we're getting the ads here. And let's just see if, oh, let me get out of full screen. Yes, I remember this gentleman. I see, and he's doing it from the, um, he's doing it from the command line. So that's going to be a, a more effort. But if you follow those videos in the tutorial, I think it's going to work. I think we did it, folks. I think we installed our AvaFlow. And I'm going to guess that the problem that the um, one of my viewers was pointing out, I'm going to guess that the problem was that they didn't install that grass dev package. So to do that, it's that command that um, you saw me use in the video. Oh, hold on a second. I'll try to pull it up again for you here so we can cut to the chase. I uh, hold on, I gotta get the other one up. Well. Well, you all are my witnesses that I did have it here in the live, but it's not it's not showing up in my in my search history, so I can't I can't uh, I actually maybe I could try scrolling up see even if it's still there. There we are. So that's the com so I'm going to guess that when that person who wrote to me wasn't able to get it working, I'm going to guess that it's because they didn't use they didn't install the grass dev package. And to do that, you have to drop to a terminal window and you have to type sudo apt-get install grass. And then from within the grass repository, you have to install the grass-dev package. So that's not something you install within grass. That's something you install for Linux. And then grass is able to then uh, use that development package that's been installed at this root level within Linux. Uh, well, uh, thank you for the emojis, Bird Drive. Um, and I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, end this live stream. I'll do this again in another couple of weeks. Uh, if you have questions about running something, email me. You can use YouTube at joshbanta.com. It's a pretty easy email address. Um, let me see if I can put it up on the screen for you quickly. I can't do it quickly, so uh, I'll put it in the show notes. But you can email me at, at YouTube at joshbanta.com, uh, or you can leave a comment on one of my videos, and um, that'll give me some more fuel of things to discuss in my next live stream. So take care, everyone. Uh, have a good uh, uh, July here, and I will see you again in, later on in this